Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for intermediate algebra. This is section 9.5, which is systems of nonlinear equations. If you recall, you've worked in section 2.5, which was systems of linear equations. Well, we're going to use the exact same tools and concepts to solve systems of nonlinear equations. The only difference is, instead of lines, we now have conic sections. Um, so the first example we're going to do is we're going to solve a system of nonlinear equations by graphing. So if we're going to graph these, the first thing we need to do is to identify what type of conic section do I have. So I look at the first one. I have y squared minus 4x squared equals 4. I see it is the difference of squared terms. So I know I'm going to be graphing a hyperbola. I look at this one. I have x squared plus 4y squared equals 16. Initially, I might think that's a circle, but these have different coefficients. If they have different coefficients, it's an ellipse. So what, in order to graph a hyperbola, a hyperbola or an ellipse, I want to put them in standard form. So that's what I'm going to do here. To put a hyperbola in standard form, I set it equal to 1. So I'm going to divide all terms by 4. So y squared divided by 4 is y squared over 4. 4x four squared divided by 4 would be x squared over 1. So this isn't really necessary, but I'm going to put it in there. And 4 divided by 4 is 1. So this is my hyperbola. Do the same thing for our ellipse. Divide everything by 16 to put it into standard form. I get x squared over 16 plus the 4 would reduce. So we get y squared over 4 equals 1. So divide this by 16, this, and this by 16. And we end up with this is our ellipse. Now we're ready to graph it using the tools we learned in the previous section. Now, to graph a hyperbola, and because we're graphing for a solution to a system, we want to be very careful when we graph. We want our graph to be very accurate. So for this. Hyperbola, I recognize my b value, the value squared under y squared. This would be plus or minus 2. So I'm going to go plus or minus 2 on my graph. I look at the a value. The square root of 1 would be plus or minus 1. So I'm going to go plus 1 or minus 1. And now I realize that this is a hyperbola. So I actually want to graph these corners, the combination of my a and b points. And I'm going to draw a rectangle. Now, because I want to be very accurate, because we're graphing for a solution, I'm going to use the straight edge here to draw my diagonals. And we can see that sometimes graphing can be a little bit tedious and time consuming. But we're, we're a patient type, us math, math folk. All right, and now, because it's a hyperbola, I'm going to determine what direction that it opens. Well, the y term is first, so it opens in the y direction, up and down. So from here, I'm going to graph this section and this section. I just draw towards my diagonals. I start from the edge of my rectangle, and I draw towards my diagonals. So I just graphed my hyperbola. Now I'm going to graph the ellipse. Well, I still have to look at the a and b values. The a value squared to give me 16 would be plus or minus 4. And one thing I recognize is this ellipse is centered at the origin. So for the x-intercepts, I'm going to go plus or minus 4. So I'm going to go 4 to the right and 4 to the left. And then. The b value I recognize as plus or minus 2. So I go up 2 and down 2. And now I'm ready to graph my ellipse. So now, if we're looking for the intercepts, because that's what a solution to a system of equations is, is where our graphs intercept, I can see from the graph that they share this value and this value. There are two solutions. But at most, there could have been four solutions. Uh, because I have 2 squared, 
values or two squared equations, I could have up to four solutions. So this value here is where x is 0, y is a positive 2. And this solution is where x is 0 and y is a negative 2. So by graphing, I was able to identify those uh, intercepts where the two graphs intersect each other. But I should always check my work. So I'm going to test these points. If my x value is 0 and my y value is 2, 2 squared is 4. 0 squared is 0 times negative 4 is 0. So we get 4 minus 0 equals 4. That's a true statement. If I test the other point in there, it has to be true as well. And we'd get negative 2 squared is 4 minus 0 equals 4, also a true statement. It has to be true in this one as well, both points. So we have 0 squared plus 4 times 2 squared is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. Or we'd have 0 and 4 times negative 2 squared, which is also 4. 4 times 4 is still 16. So both solutions work in the equation. So I would write the solutions as a set of the two points, 0, negative 2, and 0, positive 2. Those are my solutions, these two ordered pairs. Let's look at another example where we're going to graph to find the solution. And I'm going to bring my straight edge for this one as well. So here we have x squared plus 4y squared equals 4. Hopefully, we recognize that as an ellipse. We have the sum of squared terms, but they have different coefficients. So the first thing I'm going to do is write it in standard form, divide everything by 4. And I'm going to leave that 1 in there after I reduce so that I know the, uh, the term I'm looking for, that b squared. This here I recognize as the equation of a line. Well, to put an equation of a line in standard form, maybe I want to put it in slope intercepts. So I'd solve it for y. And essentially, I just change the order and then divided everything by 2. So half of 12 is 6, and half of negative 1 is negative 1 half. So now I'm ready to graph these values. Well, the first one being an ellipse. I'm going to graph the a value, which is plus or minus 2, and it's centered at the origin. So plus 2 and minus 2. And its b value would be plus 1 and minus 1. I'm ready to graph that ellipse. And hopefully, I had a steady hand, and that looks elliptish. If that's a word, it should be. And then this is just the equation of a line. So we have y equals negative 1 half x plus 6. I'm going to start at the intercept of 6. And then I'm going to use the slope to find some other value. Well, if I go down 1 and over 2. And now I'm ready to graph that line. And I'm going to use a straight edge here because I want an accurate graph. Well, what I notice here is because we're solving a system of uh, nonlinear equations, when I solve any system of equations, I'm looking for where they intersect. If I look at these two graphs, they will never intersect. The ellipse is down here. The line is up here. They will not intersect. Well, what does that mean? There is no intercept, which means there's no solution to this system. So we would write no solution. And I'm just going to abbreviate there. No solution, because they do not intersect. Now, when it comes to graphing, as we've seen, sometimes it can be a little bit tedious, especially if we're doing a hyperbola, because we have a lot to be aware of. There's other methods that we've learned in the past that still work. And that is substitution and elimination. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to solve this by substitution. Now, if we look at this example, we could choose either method, substitution or elimination. But because now that they're not linear, we actually have more tools that we can use. I don't have to solve for a single variable. I can solve for a squared term. I could solve for maybe a group of terms, as long as it's something that's in common with the other equation. So if I'm going to do substitution for this example, maybe I want to solve it for x squared x squared 
plus y equals 5, well, I can solve for x squared simply by subtracting y from both sides. So I just rearrange this equation. x squared equals negative y plus 5. Now I can do substitution. This value, negative y plus 5, is x squared. Let's plug it in. Let's substitute it in. So I'd have negative y plus 5 plus y squared equals 25. Now, if we notice what we have here is we have a new equation, but it only has one variable. So maybe I can assess this and say, well, what kind of equation is this? Well, this is a quadratic equation, so I want to write it in standard form and set it equal to 0. So I have y squared minus a y. If I subtract 25 from both sides, I get negative 20 equals 0. Now I can solve this using quadratic methods. And this one just happens to factor. The factors of negative 20 that have a difference of 1 are y minus 5 and y plus 4. So zero factor theorem says this would be 5 to make this factor 0, and this would be negative 4. So I found two values of y. What I need to do is go back to this and find values of x. Now, we have to be careful because if we think about the graphs that we have, this one is a parabola, and this one is a circle. If I draw a circle and then maybe draw a parabola over it, I could have up to four solutions. I might have three, I might have two, I might have one. Or like we saw in the last example, I might not have any. So I know I'm looking for up to four. If I get more than four solutions, I may have done something wrong. So let's take these values and go back to our substitution. Or we could go back to the other equation. It really doesn't matter, but I like to use my substitution. So I'm going to put this value in. If I put 5 in for y, x squared equals negative 5 plus 5. Well, negative 5 plus 5 is 0. And if I use the square root method, plus or minus 0 is really only one value, x equals 0. Now, this is why I say you have to be careful. That was when y was 5. So the ordered pair is 0, 5. But I also have to find the values for this. So I have to do it again. I'm going to take x squared equals negative the y value of negative 4 that I found plus 5. And if I simplify this, this would be positive. Plus 5 is 4 plus 5 is 9. x squared equals 9. We could use the square root method. I get plus or minus 3. Two different values for x when I put in the value of y. So I get negative 3 when x is negative 4. But I also get positive 3 when x is negative 4. I actually found three solutions. What I need to do is check my work. Because I used the y value in this equation, which was just a rearrangement of this, I know it works in these. I need to try it in this one. So if I have 0 and 5, 0 squared is 0. 5 squared is 25. That's a true statement. If I have negative 3 and negative 4, negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 4 squared is 16. 9 and 16 is 25. That's a true statement. And if I have positive 3 and negative 4, 3 squared is 9. Negative 4 is 16 when we square it. 9 and 16 is still 25. So it works in all of our equations. So we have three solutions. So it is the set of ordered pairs, 0, 5, negative 3, negative 4, and positive 3, negative 4. If I were to have graphed this, what we would have seen is a circle, and it shares a point with the parabola, where this was the point 0, 5. This was the point negative 3, negative 4. And this was the point positive 3, negative 4, where this was my axis. So we have that right there. So <clears throat> that was the solutions we found. And we wrote it as a set of ordered pairs. Now, we can see how sometimes graphing would be more complex 
especially when we come to something like this, because our values are not nice values. If I assess this, I recognize the difference of squared terms. That's a hyperbola. And this is the sum of squared terms that have different coefficients, so it's an ellipse. I have an ellipse and a hyperbola. If I draw these, I could have, at most, four solutions. But I might have three, I might have two, I might have one, or I could have none. But at most, I'll have four solutions. So if I went to put these in standard form, we can see these are not nice equations. Divide everything by 15. x squared over 5 over 15 reduces to 3. 4 over 15, well, that doesn't even reduce. So how do I find my a or b term? Well, it's not a nice integer value. So to graph that, it could be quite difficult. So we don't want to graph it. We want to have other methods in order to find the values. So for this one, instead of doing substitution, we're going to use elimination. Essentially, to eliminate a variable, if we recall, we want to line them up. And I notice that my x's and y's aren't lined up. So the first thing I'm going to do is line them up. 5x squared minus 4y squared equals 15. 4x squared plus 3y squared equals 12. Now, to eliminate, we have to have the same coefficient of opposite sign. And we can choose to eliminate the x variable or the y variable. So I'm going to choose to eliminate the y squared variable because they already have opposite signs. So now I just have to get their coefficients to be the same. Well, the least common multiple of 4 and 3 would be 12. So if I multiply this equation by 3, that coefficient will be a negative 12. If I multiply this one by 4, that coefficient will be a positive 12. So let's go ahead and do that. This would give me 15x squared minus 12y squared equals 45. This would give me 16x squared plus 12y squared, which was my goal, equals 48. And now I can add them, because another term that we use for the elimination method was the addition method. Those are synonyms. So 15x squared plus 16x squared is going to give me 31x squared. Negative 12y squared and 12y squared is no more y's being squared. 45 and 48 is going to give me 93. Now I have an equation in a single variable. So I'm going to attempt to solve this. I'm going to divide both sides by 31. And I get x squared equals 3. 93 is divisible by 31 three times. And now I can use the square root method. If I take the square root of both sides, I have to remember plus or minus, And I get the square root of 3. Obviously, it wasn't a nice integer, but it is my solution, at least for x. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 3. I'll just write it over there for now. Now we have to go back to our equations and find a y value. Well, I'm just going to arbitrarily choose this one to find the y value. So I have 3y squared plus 4 times, I'm going to use the positive square root of 3, equals 12. So I just substituted in one of the values. And now I can see that I have one variable. I can solve this. The square root of 3 squared is 3 times 4 is 12. If I subtract 12 from both sides, I get 3y squared equals 0. And hopefully we know while well, we divide 0 by 3, it's still 0. If I square 0 or square root 0, it's still 0. So y equals 0. Now, what would happen if I did the negative of that? Well, because it's squared, plus or minus, I'm going to get the same result. If I square positive square root of 3 or negative square root of 3, I'm going to get 3. 3 times 4 is still 12, so I'd get the same equation. So no matter if I have positive 3 or square root of 3, I get 0. If I have negative square root of 3, I get 0. These are two values for the y. So I plugged in two values for x, and I got the same value for y. So I only have two points here. If, uh, if we take these values, 
We need to check our work. Let's check them in this equation, because we know it works in this one, because that's where I found the y value using the given x values. So x is the square root of 3 plus or minus. And if I square it, it's not going to change it. So if I'm checking 1, I don't have to check its conjugate. So the square root of 3 squared is 15. If I subtract 15 or the square root of 3, excuse me, is 3 times 5 is 15. If I subtract 15 from both sides, I get negative 4y squared equals 0. Very similar statement. These work in both equations. So we found the two solutions. So I write their set as square root of 3, 0, and negative square root of 3, 0. So I had a hyperbola and an ellipse. and they had two solutions. Or actually, yep, it would have looked like that if I would have graphed it. So two solutions would be the edges of the ellipse and the hyperbolas. So this has been section 9.5. We're only going to get good at these through repetition. Hit the homework, do the practice, and thank you for watching.